everyone, Fido here. And uh, today I'll be bringing you a video covering all the best picks for patch 14.17. We're about halfway through the patch. All the stats are out. It's very, very obvious what picks are broken. And uh, with only three weeks left until the season ends, I want you guys to be playing you know, the strongest champions possible to give yourself the best chance of reaching your desired rank for Split 2. So uh, basically we're going to be looking at the changes in 14.17, but also we have the preview for 14.18. Uh, uh, so we'll also be kind of comparing, I think that the next patch preview is a good way to gauge what champions you should be playing in your patch. You know, if your champion is getting nerfed in in, in the next patch, then it's probably worth playing, um, unless it's a pro skewed nerf, such as the Corky one here or the Azir one here, you know, the champions are actually weak in solo queue, but they're just so prevalent in pro play that they want to shift the meta and they're over nerfing them, fair enough. Anyway, let's jump into the uh, the tier list. Uh, Cassio, I think Cassio is in a pretty good spot on this patch. She's not, excuse me, she's not insane. She's not she's not bad. She has a lot of good matchups. Things like Aurora, Cassio into Aurora, pretty great matchup. Cassio into Galio, pretty great matchup. You know, Cassio into a lot of the melee mids like Yasuo Yon, great. Um, Silas, pretty good matchup. So I think I think Cassio is definitely up there. Um, not as a blind pick, of course, but as a counter pick mid. Uh, she's 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 got a good spot and, and I'll put her in in A tier. She's certainly viable, uh, but not worth learning unless you're extremely skilled at her already. Because the champion just has way too high of a skill curve. Azir, we'll put him in B tier. I mean Azir is certainly viable, a pro jail champion. Azir is actually getting gutted in patch 14.18. I can't believe this. I mean, Riot, I, I, have you <laughs> have you looked at this Riot or or, or what? Like. Uh, it's actually mental. Azir is just so bad in solo queue. Um, you know, he's 50%. He's okay. Uh, if you're very good at him, of course, you can absolutely play him. But why is he losing 15% AP, guys? 15% AP and 125 damage off his ultimate. Like, this is a harder nerf to, to Azir than Aurora. Let's look at the Aurora nerf together, guys. Aurora, Aurora lost... Aurora lost 75 damage on her ult, max rank. Azir is losing 125 plus 15% AP. This is like a double or even triple triple nerf of what Aurora got. And Aurora is actually a broken champ, and Azir is just barely viable, and he's just popular in pro play. Like, seriously, man? So, yeah, Azir, this patch is 14.17, but if you do not know how to play Azir, don't attempt to learn him, because next patch... He's moving down here, most likely. He's either moving down here or he's going to be B minus um, after these changes. Uh, Huey, Huey is a very good champion. I'll put him at the top of A tier. Huey is a great blind pick. He's a great punish into a lot of the melee champions like Talon. Um, you know, he has great disengage. He has a lot of uh, effective HP with a shield. Actually, Huey is getting a bit of a buff next patch, but uh, this is not, you know, sometimes you have to really look at the buff. You know, just because Huey is getting a buff doesn't mean he's a bad champion this patch. This is specifically a Huey support buff. They want to see more Huey at Worlds, and they think that if they buff Huey support and give him the flexibility, then pros are more likely to pick it. Great. Um, but he's still a very strong mid laner, and you should be absolutely comfortable blinding Huey. Uh, we'll do the other similar champions as well. Uh, maybe Orianna, same thing. Orianna got many, many buffs in a row. I don't think she got buffed in this patch, but um, she did get buffed in multiple patches prior. So I think Orianna is in a pretty, pretty good spot as a blind mid, uh, as a blind mage mid, or a punish pick to some of the short range mages like Lissandra, Vex, uh, you know. TF to Leah, like Oriana. Oriana is pretty happy into all of these matchups. So, uh, if you want just a stable, uh, safe blind pick, Oriana is the go. Uh, LeBlanc was S tier last patch, but she has been nerfed. Um, pretty big nerfs, I would say. 5% um, off each ability, and that's her main combo as well. So, that's basically, you know, like 10 damage in lane that you lose um, off each trade, which is pretty pretty significant. So, we'll, we'll shift LeBlanc down to A tier. She's, again, a very viable champion, very good counter pick into a lot of assassins. Um, you know, very good into even her bad matchups. Like, if she's playing against a bully laner, she can still play it with the, with the right jungler, right? LeBlanc is just all about the jungle pairing, because you can leave your lane, you can roam, you can set up your, you know, the jungler for inbase. Or, or ganks, whatever it is. So certainly a, a viable champion uh, to play on this patch. Syndra, again, A tier. Syndra has gotten buffed as well. I think she's similar to Orianna. She has slightly better scaling to Orianna with all the uh, the orbs and the and the execute and the passive. So, um, you know, she's a reasonably strong laner. She's not going to bully lanes as hard as Ori will, but she has better gank setup, right? She has a little bit more agency with some of the junglers that got buffed, like Vi. Um, you know, Zin Zhao that's getting buffed next patch. 
uh, Javan that's getting buffed next patch. So I think next patch we'll see a lot more of these mages come back into the meta. Uh, but they're not, they're not, it's just because the other champs are getting buffed that they're going to come back into the meta. You can already start playing them. Um, I think all of these champions are great, you know, just blind picks, um, safe mid, mid champs in any matchup. Uh, Lucian, one of the champs that was nerfed, but I think that Lucian is probably one of the better ADs left in the pool because Lucian only got a very small nerf to his Q damage and he had his passive buffed, which doesn't really help you in mid lane, in laning specifically, unless your jungler has a stun, but it certainly will add up in the late game. So I actually think Lucian is, is a pretty strong champion. The issue with Lucian is that you can't really build Bork anymore because this item just sucks on range champs. It's very gold and efficient. So you pretty much have to uh, rush... Uh, I've tried rushing Essence Reaver on mid, it's okay, but the problem is they've also nerfed Absorb Life. So if you go this Essence Reaver build, right, if you if you open Essence Reaver first, which is by far the highest win rate, um, you actually have no life steal at all. So you just, you just, against the mages, you'll get poked out and it's a little bit frustrating. What I've been doing is I just go Essence Reaver Vamp, or I'll just get a Vamp and I'll just sit on the Vamp on Lucian. And I think if you do that and you just don't upgrade the Vamp and then you just get a BT later, so you just go Essence Reaver, but you, you can rush uh, pretty much vamp first base if you want to, if it's a bad matchup, or if it's a decent matchup, you just go Essence Reaver first, then you go Vamp Scepter, and then you go into Navori, and then you can go BT third item, for example, or you can go IE and then get BT fourth item. So I think Lucian is actually in a pretty decent spot. Lucian is not a bad laner. The, the little Q nerf didn't do too much, and he's, he's one of the most viable AD champs. I'd say he's the best solo Q AD carry mid outside of Smolder. Now, talking about Smolder, I think Smolder is just completely broken in solo Q. She is infinitely scaling um, the safest AD carry to play because she has so much range. You know, you can uh, clear a wave with your ult just like Orianna does, and you're more than happy to do that in the early game. So she's very, very safe. You're always going to get 10 CS per minute. You're always going to get your items. And uh, yeah, she's kind of like uh, the inescapable, you know, eventuality. She will just hit 20, 225 stacks and just start winning team fights in the mid to late game. Also, this new Smolder build, if you don't know it, um, it's the... It's this one, it's basically you go Shoujin into Monomune. Um, both of these, I mean, Monomune's quite a cheap item, and Shoujin gives you a lot of health. So uh, if you're unsure how to play Smolder, just literally type on YouTube, whatever Smolder matchup you just played. Let's say you first time Smolder, you played against Orianna. Cool, Smolder vs. Orianna. Filter by this month, and you will see a bunch of these replays from pros in Korea, from pros in China, and they are all abusing the Smolder build, and you can just watch their lane and copy what they do. And uh, yeah, the champ is very, very good, no matter which build you go. Um, I think either Shoujin first item or Trinity Force first item are great, and into Monomune second. Now Yone got a bit of a nerf in this patch with the fleet and cut down and absorb life changes. I think now on Yone you should just go, excuse me, Triumph instead of absorb life. This rune is just completely dead. Cut down, not that great. I would go last stand. So on Yone you should just go Triumph, last stand. And you still kind of have to go fleet, but this rune is just complete garbage. Um, there's not really much you can do, you just have to take it. But I would still put Yone in A tier because his items are good. Uh, you know, you're still happy to just go Bork. You have the sustain from, uh, you know, the early Vamp Scepter. Uh, you get your IE or you get your Shield Bow and you feel very, very powerful. But also Yone is really good to play right now because uh, in patch 14.18, just about a week away, uh, we're going to see the Shield Bow buffs to melee champs at the bottom there. So Shield Bow second on Yone is going to be buffed as well as... Uh, obviously the fleet changes, right? Fleet is going to be much better on melee champs. It's going to be sort of buffed significantly uh, for melee champions and nerfed even further for ranged champs there. You can see they're just gutting the heal for ranged champs and increasing the heal for melee champs. Um, and look at that, 5 to 10 level 1. That is insane. Our next, pa next champion, Yasuo, uh, pretty good. Pretty good right now. Uh, huge buffs to his E. Uh, he's very obnoxious laner. Again, he's nerfed the same way that Yone is because he ran the same page as Yone. So he's a little bit weaker on this patch. I would not put him in S tier. He's not overpowered, uh, but certainly very viable. And if you have some knockups on your team and there's value for Windwall, you can you can choose to pick him. Uh, Corky gutted. Um, I am honestly. I honestly want to put him in, in C tier for solo queue, but we'll just put him in B because he is actually getting nerfed again uh, on next patch, which is just crazy to me. Because if you just look at Corky's win rates, um, you know this is the, he's getting the Tristana treatment where the champion just got completely killed. Uh, his fleet fleet's not even viable in him anymore. Like fleet is such low win rate, you have to go. Um, you know, first strike is better, but if you don't go fleet against uh, ranged champions that are bullies in lane like Ori, 
uh, like Huey, like Syndra, if you don't have that move speed from Fleet, you're going to be hit, getting hit by more abilities, you're going to struggle to lane, struggle to hit your item spike, so I don't know. If you already put a lot of time into Corki, absolutely, you can still play him, he's viable, but I think next patch, be really careful, you know, um, in a week's time, another nerf to Corki, he might just drop down here. Next, uh, let's look at Diana. Diana, certainly a viable champ as a counter pick, uh, mid some matchups specifically, um, she's Quite good into Smolder, actually. Very good into Smolder. If you haven't tried it, Diana into Smolder feels really, really good. You can interrupt her E with your ult pretty much every single time. Uh, you can just ignore her damage in lane by just pressing W, so you always get push early. So, uh, yeah, Diana's very strong into certain mages, into, like, Talia, into Ori. Um, but then, you know, other things will just crush it in lane. So, uh, yeah, if, you, if you're if you a Diana mid player, then uh, there's no reason not to play it. But if you're not, it's not worth investing time into this champion. Cassidy, I think... I think Kassadin will go up in priority. Right now, Kassadin has been in C tier because he got nerfed a few times. Um, Rod of Ages is not a good item. It's probably one of the worst mage items in terms of like, you know, efficiency uh, because when you build Rod of Ages, you only get 50 AP, which is very little for 2,600 gold. Um, so I, I do think that once we see more of these AP bland mages come back into meta, Kassadin will move up in priority. And I feel bad putting Kassadin into C tier, uh, but... I think he's going to have to stay there for now, um, at least until next patch, at least until we see uh, a consistently mage dominant meta uh, back in action. Then Kassadin will just gradually move up here or maybe even up here, uh, depending on what champs take the reins. Echo, I think Echo is pretty bad right now. Actually, no, Echo is not bad because uh, Protobelt did get buffed. So I think Protobelt Echo, uh, Protobelt is just such a broken item right now. So I actually think Echo is kind of good in the same spots that Diana is good in. Um, so if you're an Echo mid player with Halo Blades, it's pretty damn good. Um, as a counter pick to some mages. Um, it's obviously decent in some melee matchups as well. Another champion that is very, very strong is Gallia. We're actually going to put him in S tier because Gallia has been hidden OP for a very, very long time. If we go back all the way to patch 14.14, which was just after the Gallia changes with, uh, you know, his passive uh, being able to get reset from his abilities, uh, he was actually a top 5 slash top 10 win rate mid on every single patch. Um, in Emerald Plus, in Master Plus, and if you remember correctly, uh, patch 14.14 was dominated by Tristana mid, and Tristana mid is one of the hardest Gallia counters, so uh, you've played against Tristana mid every game, and yet his win rate is so high. At 14.15, you're playing against Lucian mid every game, or you're playing against Zeri mid every game, you're playing against Corky mid every game, which are all really good picks into Gallia, because one, your shield does nothing, um, and also these champions get prior on every wave and do a lot of tower damage, so whenever you want to cheat your wave and gank side lanes, which is what your ult is for, uh, you basically lose your entire mid tower. So in a meta, throughout all of these patches, all three of these patches, in a meta that was dominated by 80 carries mid, Galio still strived. And that should just tell you how OP the champion is. Uh, his win rate went down a little bit, but he's still very, very viable, um, especially if you pick him in the right spots, especially if you pick him against an AP heavy draft. So if they have two AP champions, just lock in Galio, two or more AP champions, lock in Galio, build Holo Radiance, um, and then just build full AP. You know, just Holo Radiance into Riftmaker, into... Banshee Zonia's death cap. And you will be unkillable. You will one shot people. And this champion will feel like a breeze. Even if you're new to Galio, I would absolutely recommend you, you start playing it now. Because in patch 14.18, he's only going to get stronger. Shadow Flame, Storm Surge, Ludens are getting buffed. So all these champions, all these mages are going to come back into meta. The AP Assassins are going to come back into meta. You know, LeBlanc is going to benefit from this. And Galio absolutely counters all these champs. Uh, it's a completely free game. As long as you can build Holo Radiance first item, uh, this champion is broken. So please pick him up if you haven't already. Now, Ace in a pretty decent spot. I think you got a, a few too many nerfs. Um, it feels like Asol is a very slow champion, and if you're gonna play slow champion, just play Smolder because Smolder feels like she, you know, sh she's a bit more independent than Asol. Uh, Smolder can kind of clear the waves without using all her abilities or all her mana and contribute to skirmishes. Whereas Asol, you sort of put your E on the ground, and if if your laner moves away from your wave and plays a, you know, plays an objective or plays a, a jungle skirmish, you kind of feel a bit useless on ASOL. So I think, you know, if you're going to play the hyper carry, hyper scaling mid, Smolder is just a better ASOL right now. But ASOL is certainly viable. If you pick him in a good matchup, um, I think that he can be strong. You know, honestly, we could put him in A tier. He's somewhere between these two, these two tiers. But do I really feel like ASOL is as bad as, as the mid? Maybe we'll just put him A tier. I, I don't think ASOL is bad. I think ASOL is, is, is certainly in the same, um, in the same boat as Smolder. If the game is too fast-paced, you just auto-lose, but if the game gets slowed down, 
um, then you'll be very, very strong um, coming into the later stages. Uh, Katarina got a little bit of a nerf, I think, if you're one trick on Katarina, she's absolutely strong. If you're not, then do not play this champion. Ari, she's actually getting buffed in the next patch, so, um, you know, I, I think that right now there's no particularly great items, like Malignance is, an, uh, you know, it's a decent item, uh, but, you know, Lich Bane got nerfed a few times, and Ari's very short range, she's not really the best scaling champ, you know, if you're playing Ari into uh, Smolder, if you're playing Ari into Hue, if you're playing Ari into Ori, I swear, like, these champs are just easier to play in the late game, um, you just play front to back, you're chilling, but Ari, you're reliant on a pick, so I'll put Ari in B tier. I think she, I think she's okay. And next next patch maybe she'll go up to A tier. Uh, but I don't think she's particularly strong or worth learning if you haven't played her already. Uh, Akshan, this champion is just so bad. I, I can't describe how bad champion is. How bad this champion is again with Akshan. Akshan and Twisted Fate are two champions that you can tell whether they're good by just looking at the win rate. I promise you because these champions are so elo inflated in solo queue because they have. You know, TF has a global, and Akshan has a stealth and a revive. And whenever Akshan was good, if you just look throughout this whole year in Emerald Plus or Master Plus, however you want to look at it, I usually look at, I usually look at Master Plus. But if you just look at all the old patches, patch 14.12, Akshan, top 10 win rate champion. Patch 14.13, Akshan, top two win rate champion. Patch 14.14, Akshan, you know, top one, you know, patch 14.15, he's dead. They've killed him. Patch 14.16. He's dead, you know, like, his his rank went from, from the best mid lane in the game to the 33rd best mid lane in the game. And this hasn't changed for Emerald either. You know, for Emerald, it's even, it's even a bigger nerf for, for lower elo. So, yeah, Akshan is just absolutely terrible. Do not pick this champion. He only has one viable build right now, one high, high win rate build, which is IE Rush. This build is so flip because if you have a bad game and you base on like 800 gold and you can't afford a pickaxe and you can't afford a BF sword, you basically buy a Crick Cloak and you're playing like Crick Cloak Akshan against, I don't know, double Amp Tome guy or double Longsword guy. It's just terrible. It's just, but this is the only viable build. You just play this one shot build where you just have to uh, insta push the wave with your Q because this gives you a lot of AD and uh, just roam and hope that you can open up on someone Q, double auto, E, and they die. Otherwise, you're just a useless champ. You know, the on-hit build is not viable anymore. Um, you can't go, like, Bork Kraken because both the items are nerfed. You can go Kraken first into IE, but I don't know. Just stay away from Akshan. We'll put him in B tier. I think he's still the most viable because at least he has a workable build. So we'll, we'll give him that. He has one decent build, but the build just takes way too good of a base that you can't guarantee in some matchups. And in those matchups, the game just feels unplayable when you base without enough money for a BF Sword or a Pickaxe. So next, let's look at Jace. I mean, Jace is in a pretty decent spot, honestly. I, I'm I'm not sure how Jace is actually doing in terms of win rates, but I haven't really I haven't really seen much Jace in Solo Q, But I feel like Jace is not bad. Obviously, the lethality items kind of suck. Um, but I feel like Jace is okay if you want to play Jace. Um, definitely kind of on par with Aksha. Maybe here or here. I'll probably put him here. I'm not the strongest champ. There's no good uh, Jace items right now. I feel like. Like, what do you even go first item? I guess Eclipse. Yeah, Eclipse is definitely a pretty decent item, but everything else kind of has been nerfed for range champs a lot, both humors and opportunities. So, yeah, if you want to play Jace, you can as an AD pick, but there's just so many other better options in the A tier and the S tier that I don't think you should uh, you should waste your time on it unless you're already a Jace player. Victor. Uh, Victor is kind of like... I'm not really sure why Victor has been bad for so long, but he's just not popular at all. Um... Maybe next patch again with Storm Surge being buffed could be a really, really big change for Victor. Uh, Storm Surge is going to be 25% threshold to get the movement speed from it. So essentially every time you combo someone with QE on Victor, you should probably get you know, Storm, uh, Storm Surge uh, active, which gives you essentially a phase rush, right? So you could play something like Aerian Lane um, and then go Storm Surge second item. You'll get the Magic Pen. You get a bit of extra move speed, and every single time you do your Victor rotation, you get the uh, um, the big surge of haste to disengage and wait your cooldowns out. So Victor could be very good next patch, but I think right now I'll put him in B tier. He's not that not that great. Swain, put him in B tier as well. Swain just again another champion that wants to build Rod of Ages, but Rod of Ages is not a good item, so you have to put him in B tier. Rise got a very nice buff. Um, I will absolutely put Rise in A tier. Um, he's great right now. Uh, he's very, very tanky. He does build Rod of Ages, and he also starts Tier, which is Tier is probably the worst starting item ever because it gives you no HP, and all the other uh, Doran's items give you way too much a a HP. So I think that if they changed Tier to be a better starting item, 
If they buff Tia, then Ryze would go up here. But right, right now, Ryze is an absolute monster mid to late game. He has great roam potentials. He has a lot of really good matchups right now. Ryze into Aurora is a very, very good matchup because you are too tanky to die. You know, Ryze into Vex is a very good matchup. Ryze into, you know, any of these mages is totally viable. Um, and especially Ryze into some of these very heavy scaling champions like Smolder and Aesol, you can pretty much match the push or push faster than they can, then roam and lose nothing mid for it. So, uh, yeah, Ryze is definitely a champion worth uh, looking at if you are interested in playing him. He got buffed, and he's in a pretty solid spot. Uh, next, we've got Silas. I'm going to put Silas in ST. I think Silas has been nerfed this patch, but um, he was just a little bit overpowered. And um, for low elo, Silas is still the highest win rate champ, even after the nerfs. For high elo, he also is as well. Now, one thing that people are doing wrong is you need to understand that Silas has multiple viable builds. If you look at the win rates, right? Q max is actually viable and W max is also viable. So you need to really critically assess like, what should I build on Silas for the right game? Because both of these builds are viable. You can rush Lich Bane and go for the one shot build. You can rush Protobel and be more tanky and play this sort of bruiser Silas, but you just need to know the right spot to play it in. Because if you look at the runes as well, it's pretty much a 50-50 split on Electrocute and uh, Conqueror. And they're both entirely viable runes. Just need to pick them in the right place. So, um, if you're interested in playing Silas, I'm actually going to be releasing a Silas guide in the next few days uh, that will cover all the everything you need to know about matchups, everything you need to know about uh, when to pick him, when to play him. But trust me, he is very, very strong mid lane. He's actually very easy to pick up, specifically if you play this build. So if you play the Conqueror build, it's literally you just go Rocket Belt, um, first item, second item. I like Lich Bane personally, but you can go Cosmic Drive or Rift Maker, and third item again, Cosmic Drive or Rift Maker, whichever one you want. You basically are extremely tanky. Um, you're just able to stick on people because your E cooldown is very, very low. You max W, then you max E with this build. And you're just playing kind of like a frontline heal tank, buying a lot of time, making a lot of space for your team. And uh, yeah, the champion's very, very strong. So I would advise you to play Silas and keep an eye on my channel, subscribe, and you'll, uh, you'll see a guide out very, very soon for it. Now, next champ, Aurora. Again, OP champ. Aurora has been buffed this patch. I mean, sorry, she's been nerfed this patch, but it's a very uh, very small nerf, just a little bit of a damage nerf, which doesn't really do anything because the two strengths of Aurora is one, she's she's a bully in lane. She's very similar to Vex in lane against melee champs, so she can absolutely bully melees with her QE. Um, and obviously her range right now is just insane. The W into the ult range, you can just ult someone from two screens away. And most importantly, it's a non-committal ability, right? You can just ult someone and sit on the edge and... They can't leave, you can't leave, your team catches up and they get the kill. So you don't really have to do anything. Aurora is getting a pretty big nerf next patch. You can see 250 range off her dash on the R, which is going to be very punishing to bad Aurora players. And uh, a little bit of the wall jump forgiveness, which is a little silly right now. I like this nerf. I think the wall jump forgiveness is crazy. You can go through some very, very fat walls because as long as your R goes through more than half the wall, it just teleports you um, to the other side anyway. And uh, the R duration is going down by one second, which is absolutely massive. So this is going to be a massive nerf to Aurora, to her ultimate, but it's not going to change her laning. She's still going to be a very strong laner. And keep in mind, Shadow Flame and Storm Surge are getting buffed. So potentially we'll see new builds where Aurora will go maybe even Ludens, um, or she'll go Shadow Flame, or she'll go Storm Surge. And uh, yeah, these instead of instead of uh, Protobelt second, um, some of these builds might be very very strong. We don't know. So I would. I would say that Aurora is worth practicing right now. She's very, very strong. I think she's the second highest. She's the second highest win rate champion. Yeah, she's the second highest win rate champion after Silas third in high elo. So if you don't play her already, please pick her up. She's actually a lot easier to play than you think. If you have any experience playing Zoe, if you have experience playing Vex, if you have experience playing uh, Syndra, she's, she's actually very similar to these champs. Um, and she's a lot of fun to play. So uh, again, I'll be looking to try and post an Aurora guide for you soon um, and uh, go in depth on exactly how you can use this champ to climb before the season ends. Now, Kiana got a pretty good buff. Uh, I think Kiana's in a good spot. I'm not sure if I can put her to A tier, but yeah, if you're if you're looking for an AD champ, some of these assassins like Kiana, like Zed, are absolutely very strong. Actually, I would put Zed in A tier because I think Zed Zed's items are actually great right now. Like uh, Eclipse is is not a bad item, and yeah, I think Zed as a counter pick is an absolutely A tier 
champion. Now the next champion is Twist of Fate. I'm going to put Twist of Fate in BT. I think TF got too many nerfs uh, for the AD variant and it impacted his AP variant as well. Uh, now he did get a little bit of a buff. This helps you one shot the back wave faster, which is nice. Uh, but I don't think that's enough to bring him up because of all the bully laners that have also been buffed that can just completely destroy him in the first five levels. And it feels like you're just suffocating before you even get your ultimate. And by the time you get your ultimate, you're already so far behind that you just can't even get prior to move to plays and you move without prior and then you lose a wave and it just makes your matchup worse. So I'm gonna put TF and B tier, but keep in mind uh, the changes to Storm Surge next patch might be absolutely massive for TF because being able to WQ someone and instantly get that 25% you know, max HP um, proc and get the move speed uh, from Storm Surge could be absolutely massive. So next patch, look out for sort of Lich Bane into Storm Surge TF builds being very, very high win rate. We'll just have to see. That's my hypothesis. It might be very good, and he might move up to A tier um, on patch 14.18. Talia, just an A tier champ, just a safe, blind mid, kind of the same as these three champs. Has been nerfed uh, a little bit, so, uh, you know, she's not she's not an S tier champ, but uh, she certainly fit, fits the same role as, like, Rise and pushes the wave and moves to sides and her items are decent. You know, you can build Proto Belt. I mean, you can build Cosmic Drive or you can build the Andri second or you can build Shadow Flame second. Again, we might see with the Storm Surge changes, that might be very good for Tully as well. You can combo someone, you get the Storm Surge proc, you get the move speed, you can sort of tether with your Q. So we'll see what happens in the next patch right now. Tully, a viable, you know, blind uh, kind of prior roaming mid laner. Uh, Vex, Vex is in a really good spot right now. Vex is a very strong answer to Aurora. She's also a very strong answer to Silas. So I will put Vex here because in the good matchups, obviously like Vex into Galio is really bad. So this is the matchup that you don't want to play. These two matchups you really want to play. And uh, you know, you don't want to play against Ori. You don't really want to play against Huey as Vex. Uh, but a lot of the other champions, you know, Vex into Smolder is actually really nice because you can one-shot this champ at every point in the game. Vex into some of the melee champs, very, very nice as well. So, yeah, Vex is kind of like, in a good game, she's ST, in a bad game, she's B tier. Nothing's really changed. Next patch, this might change. St Shadow Flame and Storm Surge buffs are both really good for Vex. Vex also likes building Ludens, so there's five extra AP, um, you know, 50 gold off. I think this is a this is a net positive change to Ludens, even though it's probably neutral. But Vex personally doesn't like ability haste; she just wants pure damage. Uh, so this this could be a very nice boss for Vex in the next patch. So keep an eye out for it. And uh, Zerath, B tier champ, just good counter pick into some short range mages. Very very bad against uh, a lot of the um, assassin champs in the meta right now. So uh, just I would not pick Zerath mid uh, right now. Uh, Lissandra, extremely strong champion. I'm actually tempted to put Lissandra in S tier. I think Lissandra is somewhere between S and A tier. She's actually over buffed. She got buffed many, many times, and right now her damage ratios are just too high. It feels like once you get one item on Lissandra, or even, uh, you know, if you get one item and you max out your Dark Seal, and then you just go rabbit on second item, you literally one shot people through Merc Treads. Like people have Merc Treads and you just one shot them with your combo, which is kind of insane right now. Um, if you don't play Lissandra already, I highly recommend you start playing it because um, especially, especially in lower elos, uh, these buffs made a huge difference. I think this buff also made a really big difference that people don't think about is that it basically means that at every point in the game now, it's way easier for you to, uh, to land your passive because people are getting slowed by your ults. If you one shot someone and then you ult yourself, um, the rest of the team is very likely to get hit by your passive, by your frozen thralls. Um, so I think Lissandra's in a really, really good spot right now. And you can see next patch, she's actually losing 10% AP ratio, which is not not just running this nerf back, but this is actually like over nerfing her. So this is, you know, at one, at one, one and a half items, this is going to be power neutral to what she was before patch 14.17. But past two items, it's actually going to be a nerf, a straight up nerf to her. So uh, while you can, before patch 14.18 hits, just abuse these Lissandra changes. I think this champion is very, very strong right now. And um, yeah, just consider picking it up. It's very easy. A um, couple of games in, you you just know the combo. And all you have to do is just recognize, okay, do I need to ult someone to engage? Or do I need to ult myself to not die instantly? And the build is literally just malignance into any 120 AP item. You can go Shadow Flame, you can go um, Zonias, you can go Banshees, or you can go Death Cap if you're having a really good game. Otherwise, you just third item Death Cap always. You can also go Void if you really want to. And you just basically build full AP and just one-shot people. You're an absolute menace on the side. Uh, you're a menace to engage. You have engage buttons. And your laning is actually fairly strong because your Q threshold on the wave is so nice now. You know, once you get five points in the queue, or even four points in the queue, you can pretty much perma shove without going oom um, with just one ability. It's, it's very, very good. 
Now, next we have Fizz. Fizz, definitely a viable champ. Put him in ATA, just strong assassin. Again, next patch, Fizz might even go up, depending on how big these uh, Shadow Flame and Storm Surge buffs for him are. But certainly a viable counter pick. If you're a Fizz one trick, you can play him. He's be strong. He's always been strong. Just a solo key champ. Akali. Akali is quite good. Um, I'll put Akali in A tier as well. She's a very strong AP assassin. I think Silas is just a better Akali right now because he has two viable builds. He can play the Q Max in bad matchups. He can play the W E Max in good matchups with Conqueror. Uh, whereas for Akali right now, I think Fleet is too nerfed. You shouldn't take Fleet in Akali. Um, you should just play the Electric Key Page um, or potentially Conqueror if you're playing against, you know, top lane against some bruises. Uh, but next patch with the fleet buffs, with the massive fleet buffs for melee champions, and again, the assassin items getting buffed, Akali might move up here. So Akali is a really good champ to start practicing now, um, in case she does become the meta uh, in the next patch. And all the signs are pointing to Akali being good uh, with fleet for sure. Lux, just an average mid laner, you know, just clear the wave. But I feel like if, you, if you're going to pick a blind AP mage, you might as well just pick Ori. Because, you know, you pick Lux, enemy picks Fizz, you're very, very sad. You pick Lux, you pick Ori, enemy picks Fizz, you just bully him to death. You have a shield. Um, you know, you're just a stronger laner. You, know, you can just bully melee counter picks better on some of these other blinds rather than if you pick Lux. So I'll put Lux in B tier. I'm not a huge fan of this champion. Tristana C tier. Tristana's just nerfed. Tristana is just dead, guys. Like, do not play Tristana. I don't know what to tell you. Tristana has been gutted to the point where she's literally unplayable. I'm playing the champ, and it makes me disgusted to just be in that game. I can just feel that my champ goes oom after after like after level seven. My champ is just permanently oom. I can't reset my jumps. Um, well, I don't have fleet. I don't have fleet to get the extra auto to reset my jump. I never get the full autos because I have to go to PTA now because fleet is such a garbage rune. And there's no lethal tempo. It's just so sad. But yeah, just RIP Tristana. Do not play this champion um, unless you're just trying to have some fun, uh, trying to do some you know nostalgic things. Uh, but if you're actually playing win ranked, please don't play Tristana. Vega, I think Vega's probably here as well. I mean, he's. He's okay. He got nerfed a little bit too much. Uh, the problem is his last hitting thresholds are a little bit bad early game right now. Like It feels like it takes too much AP to start one-shotting the wave. Uh, if you're not going to max your W, and if you max your W, then you essentially won't have the stun duration. So ever since they made that change, that's like, oh, you have to choose between getting a better AP ratio on your W or getting a longer stun duration. I feel like that kind of gutted the champion. So just B tier, viable if you're a Vega player, you know, in certain matchups like against Azir. Um... Maybe even against like Galio, some of the free lanes, maybe against like Aesol, um, Smolder, you're okay with playing Vega, but don't think this champ is worth learning. Zeri, again, a decent 80 mid. Flea got nerfed, so that nerfed Zeri, but all her items are still the same. So you can still play Zeri mid if you if you want an 80 champion. Annie, I don't know what's happened to Annie. I haven't seen Annie in, in a hot minute. Um, don't think this champion is particularly good. It's not really a one-shot meta. Uh, MR items are pretty OP. Abyssal Mask is pretty OP. So, yeah. I mean, Annie, decent champ. If you want to play her, you can. Uh, Zoe. Zoe is actually a pretty reasonable... I don't know why people don't play Zoe. I feel like Zoe is, is actually a pretty decent champion. The items are pretty good. Again, next patch, Zoe loves these flat magic pen items. So that could be good for her as well. She also, I think, goes Ludens as well. With her normal build. Unless you go Lich Bane. And yeah, I think next patch potentially Zoe could move up here, but right now Zoe's just a, a viable champ. If you have enough champion mastery on her, you can absolutely play her with Ignite, cheese some kills, carry some games, not a problem. Anivia, Anivia is very, very strong, and Anivia's just been OP for so long. Uh, nobody plays her, I don't know why, but she's basically like Aesol. The problem with Anivia is that she is more clunky than Aesol. Aesol has like more agency because he can start fights, um, he can disengage with his uh, flight, but Anivia doesn't really have that. She has a little bit less range than Aesol and a little bit of tools to a little bit less tools to outplay, but certainly a viable champ if you if you know how to play her. Velkos, same thing, you know. I not sure why nobody plays Velkos. He's pretty strong, he has good AP ratio, he's more of a support champ, I guess, than mid. Uh, but uh, you know, totally viable. You want to give him a go? You can. Uh, Nico, I think Nico used to be very, very good again, potentially with these changes. Um, Nico was very good when Storm Surge Protobelt was OP at the start of the season. And, uh, well, Protobelt is OP again. And potentially Storm Surge might be OP next patch too. Because these buffs are directly buffs for Nico. Because now your QE combo gives you the move speed um, from the Storm Raider. And then also uh, you do the same damage as Melee Champs building Storm Surge. So there's no downside to building. You get a bit of extra magic pen. So potentially Nico might move up 
uh, to 80 in next patch. And that's about it. This is my tier list, guys. If you want to gain LP right now, the best champion by far is Aurora. Um, even though Silas is the higher win rate champ, I think Silas has a steep learning curve and there's some very bad matchups where if you pick Silas into things like Cassio or even things like Vex, it's very, very hard to play. But Aurora just has no bad matchups. Aurora has some bad matchups against long range champs like Orianna, uh, but and LeBlanc as well, because you can't really hit LeBlanc with your abilities. But the thing is, even against these champions, you can always just walk up and one shot the wave. You just kill the wave, uh, rush Mana Crystal and Aurora, rush Mana Crystal, Amp Tome in your first base, get a refill, respect, you know, maybe get a Magic Mantle if you verse something like a Fizz or an Akali or a LeBlanc, and then you're going to get to team fights, and you're literally going to ult people from two screens away. Everyone's going to die, you're going to win the game. So uh, the best champion to play for this patch and for the next patch is Aurora. Otherwise, consider learning, you know, Silas, Galio, Lissandra. I'll be releasing guides on all four of these champions in the S tier very, very soon. It depends if uh, Lissandra nerf actually matters or not. If she goes out of S tier, then it might not bother. But alternatively, if you have some free time and you're not playing at a full intensity, if you're, you know, you're tired from a long day and you're just going to play on a smurf, the best thing you could do right now is play Yasuo, Akali, and Yon. Practice these three champions, Yasuo, Akali, Yon, because next patch, when these fleet changes kick in, when the assassin items get buffed, when Shieldbo gets buffed, when these changes kick in, I promise you, the tier list will look like this. I promise you. Like, you know, maybe maybe these four champions will shift as well, but these three champs will move up to S tier because their items are just too good. And this this new fleet buff that gives you so much healing, so much more healing early, is going to mean that there's no bad matchups for Yasuo, there's no bad matchups for Yon, there's no bad matchups for Akali. You're always going to get to your one item, even on CS, and then suddenly you can one-shot the other guy and he can't one-shot you when you play against any mage mid, right? So, uh, yeah, really consider putting time into these champions as an investment uh, so that when patch 14.18 hits, when you've got two weeks left in the season, you can just spam the OP picks that nobody's prepared for and, uh, you know, reach your goals as fast as possible. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, uh, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the, in the next one.